Welcome back, horror fans, to the Weird Kid Horror Show. I am your host, the Weird Kid. It's finally done. The alien biocontainment chamber. It's done. It took me a long time to build, but it was worth it. It was super fun, and I learned a lot along the way. One of the reasons why it took me so long to build this thing is because me, traditionally, I get an idea in my head and a vision, and then I start to build it not knowing what I'm doing along the way. I've just collected a bunch of raw materials and parts and junk and then just dry fitted and built this thing from the ground up using my imagination. Hopefully I've plowed the way for you that you don't have to engineer it from the ground up that you'll be able to find some use in this tutorial. Now, the material I use to build the chamber itself is C900 PVC pipe. Now, you might not have access to that. You could use just about anything. You can still do the same thing using these principles. Anyways, I hope you enjoy this, and I want you to stick around at the end of this tutorial. Got a little surprise for you. We'll see you. So as I stated in the intro, this is a piece of 12 inch diameter PVC. However, the principles are going to be about the same no matter what it is that you're using. My piece was a bit too long and a bit rough at the end so I cut off about a foot of it. But you can make it as short or as tall as you want. Now that I got the pipe at the desired length, I took a rectangular envelope and I traced it on to the pipe. Uh, this is going to be the window to see inside the pipe and then I took a pilot bit and drilled a hole and then stuck my saw blade in there and cut out the entire square. After I got my window cut then I just went ahead and painted the whole thing with the first coat of flat black paint. Now that my first coat of paint was on there I could go ahead and start assembling this thing. I had found a big bag of these foam playmat tiles at Goodwill. Um, I think I'd seen them at Five Below as well. Um, it's pretty cheap and you can do a lot of stuff with them. In this case, I measured and cut out a uh, rectangle and glued it to the front of the chamber. Now this was going to serve as the chamber access door if you will once the door was in place i took some old hinges that i had and i glued them in place and then tried to put in a, a screw uh, but i really didn't like how that looked so i took that out and then i drilled some holes and took a upholstery tacks and with super glue i glued them into the holes and i was much happier with how that looked with my hinges and rivets in place, I went to the other side of the door and using thin foam, I cut out a little rectangular piece and glued it in place and added rivets on all four corners. This was to give the indication of some kind of a locking mechanism for the chamber. Once that was done, I went ahead again and I spray painted the whole thing. Once the paint had dried, I took my paddle bit and drilled a hole in the center of the quote unquote locking mechanism and I had salvaged an old hose bib or a spigot if you will and I took it apart and just used part of the stem the coupling and then the actual valve handle itself and I super glued everything into place now I started to put together the control box for this thing and for that I used the Walmart brand mixed nuts container with some WD-40, I was able to break down the glue on the sticker, get it all cleaned up, and then I attached a piece of foam on the front with some upholstery tacks on all four corners for rivets. Then I spray painted the whole thing black. Once it was dry, I drilled a hole and installed a toggle switch. The toggle switch doesn't do anything, it's just for looks. But then I drilled another hole for a light indicator then I got a little bit stuck because I needed a dome lens, but I couldn't figure out what to use. But then I got the idea. 
of going to Walmart with some quarters and hitting the bubble gum machines. And for 50 cents each, I was able to get a couple of bubble gum machine domes and a couple of sweet rings out of the deal. But anyways, I took the domes, drilled a hole, and then glued it on there. And as you can see, it works. So now that the dome was in place, I took this string of battery-powered Christmas lights that I had found at the dollar store. Yeah, a whole string, different colors, and I only needed one. I wasn't going to mess with rewiring it just for one bulb in case something went wrong. So I just used the whole thing. And before I set that in place, I dry fit the bulb first to make sure it would fit inside the lens. And then I figured out where the position of the box was going to go on the chamber. Once I did that, I drilled a hole to run the wires from the inside of the chamber into the control box to leave the power source inside the chamber. Once I was done with that, I took the cap of the mixed nuts container cut a thin strip of foam and went and glued it all the way around the outside of the cap to hide the corrugated texture and then I took um, what I believe to be a laundry detergent cap now this is where I was going to attach a hose so I cut a hole in the cap and as you can see it cracked but it didn't matter because then I took another piece of foam, cut a hole in it, and glued it to the top. And this is where I could attach the hose that goes into the biocontainment chamber. So once that was attached and all painted, I took this hose that I got from, I believe, a diesel exhaust treatment container. It's corrugated. It's really cool looking. I attach it to the top. And then drill the hole in the side of the chamber that was able to just fit it in. And then I took string lights, green string lights that I got from the dollar store. And then folded them up and then ran it inside the hose. And then left the battery source inside the chamber. So when I was done with that, I decided to jump over into the front and put in the pressure gauge I had lying around. In order to do that, I just drilled a hole in the top and then with some JB Weld, I epoxied the stem of the pressure gauge into the chamber itself. Now, one thing I would love to figure out one day is how to super glue or affix the inside needle in a locked position to show pressure. Uh, maybe you guys have pointers on how to do that. Please put that down in the comments. So as the daylight burned up on day one of this build, uh, I was running out of time, couldn't do much of anything else. So I took advantage of it and tested out the lights. It seemed to look pretty good. So the next day I started by taking a scrap piece of plywood I had laying around and I laid it flat on top of the pipe and with a black sharpie I traced around the inside. And I took my saw, cut out the circle. This was gonna serve as the lid, but it wasn't gonna work just, just by itself. I took some foam and I measured it out to an inch and a half and cut it into strips. And with some super glue, I glued the foam around the edge of the lid on the outside and then followed up with some upholstery tacks all the way around it and finished it off by spray painting it black. So the last thing I did was to take uh, these green string lights that I had and I glued the lights right directly onto the inside of the lid. And then I took a piece of foam and attached it so that I could slip the uh, battery pack in and out because on one side you had the on and off switch, the other side was the batteries. So I couldn't glue it down as it was. This way um, I can slip it in and out and change the batteries as needed. With the lid done, I decided to work on the actual focal point of this entire build, the alien creature. For that, I grabbed a few of the gazillion Walmart shopping bags mom has stuffed underneath the sink. You know, you probably got them too, but in this case, they come in handy. So I cut a few up to flatten them out, and then I taped them on the inside of the pipe about six inches below the window. 
this was going to be the base of the creature my work surface and then I balled some of them up taped them up and then attached them in the back to give different heights and then I grabbed a can of great stuff insulation foam and I coated the entire inside starting from the Walmart plastic bag and working my way up make sure I coated everything uh, covered all the Walmart bags created different textures and heights and then before I finished I took a scrap piece of wood and I sprayed some of the foam on the wood and I'll tell you why here in a second as the foam dries enough to where you can touch it and it doesn't feel sticky anymore but it's still not quite cured yet I took the three alien eyeballs that I had made which I'd learned from Anthony from Ace of Clay they're made of polymer clay with glass cabochons and the mouth is made of polymer clay with primo translucent polymer clay both I learned how to make from Anthony from Ace of Clay I'm going to provide you a link you can go check it out but the veins on the eyeballs I learned from a new friend of the show Eduardo Tauber from Monster Tutorials I'm going to provide you a link because he's got a great tutorial on how to make eyeballs he's got a bunch of great tutorials period new friend of the show anyways I put them into position while the foam was still pliable once it was in the position I took the alien tentacles that I made and just so you know if you want to make these alien tentacles I did a tutorial on just how to make the tentacles and I'm gonna provide you with a link to that as well but I positioned them randomly where I wanted them and with the wire that's sticking out the back I was able to punch a hole and then with super glue I was able to stick them in and secure them into place painted the entire creature bright green and then once that was dried I took some King's yellow and a bit of white and mixed it in with the bright green to create a lighter color and then I dry brushed the entire thing blending in the tentacles with the foam body of the creature just blending everything in so once that was done and it was fully cured I started to notice that there was some separation in areas between the eyeballs and the mouth and the foam insulation well remember I told you to take a scrap piece of wood and spray some of that foam on there that's where this is going to come in handy because I found that you can take a razor knife and cut thin strips from that piece of foam and super glue it into place where you have cracks and crevices and once it's dried you can take your paints and go back and blend it all in and it worked so now that my creature was done I needed to put the glass in to contain this thing poster frames from Walmart the glass is a flexible clear plastic and that's what I took I measured out the size of the window but you're not gonna be able to just glue it in place as it is the first thing that I needed to do before I put it in there was to cut thin strips of foam and on the inside lip I glued it along all four edges now this would give me a surface to glue the glass to and once that was done I was able to super glue around the foam lip and work my way across bending it as I went along and super gluing it the entire way until it was all super glued and secured in place then once that was done I cut some more thin strips and locked it all into place by gluing strips on the outside lip all the way around on all four corners and now we have a secure piece of glass a window once my alien creature was done and I had my glass in the place then it was time to start tricking this thing out so I cut some foam strips and attached it and framed out around the window and drilled some holes and put in some upholstery tacks and then I cut some more strips and I put it around the bottom near the base of the pipe 
and there again I drilled holes and put upholstery tacks just to make it pop a little bit more I started looking at the control box and I was happy with it but I think it could be better so I decided I was going to run a hose some kind of a power cable or something that's coming out of the bottom of it and going into the side of the chamber and so with some extra random plastic fittings and caps I glued it in there under, from underneath and with a hole cut I inserted a hose and ran it down and into another little fitting and attached it to the side of the chamber once the hose was glued and secured in place I decided I was going to do the dry brushing now dry brushing is a very effective technique um, for this I used silver paint um, but you can use uh, light grays or charcoal. It helps to distress what you're working on, make it look old. And with the silver paint dry brush technique, it makes it look like it's an actual metallic object. And so when I did this dry brush, I focused on raised areas and edges. Um, there again, I've said it before, if you guys want me to do a tutorial on dry brushing, I will do that just please post a comment down below and let me know and I can uh, be sure to put that together for you so once I was happy with the dry brush I moved on to the labels I found some images on Google of uh, different warning labels and everything and I printed a bunch off and I cut them out and spreading a thin even layer of Elmer's glue on the back I attached a biohazard warning symbol on the front chamber door one at the top of the chamber and then an electrical warning sticker on the control panel box. I wanted to add like some integrity sensors and to do that I got some leather cord. I bought a whole roll at Walmart, it cost me like 10 bucks and I have plenty for other projects. Um, it works good as like wires and I drilled some holes in the cap that I had attached to the chamber from the bottom hose. And then I ran the cord along different points on the chamber and I had these little caps left over and I put upholstery tacks in the top spray painted them and then glued them and attached the cord to them in all different spots around the chamber and everything was painted up and those were dry brushed and once I was done that I, I was done I was satisfied this thing is finally done and I can't tell you how happy I am with the results I was particularly happy with this thing when nightfall finally came and I was able to turn on all the lights I really like how this thing looks and feels I hope that this inspires you to try to do this yourself so if you haven't already done so please like and subscribe click on that little bell that little bell is going to notify you anytime i upload a video in the future but now you need to stick around because that little surprise i told you about it's coming now deep within a top secret research laboratory sits an unspeakable horror a deadly alien creature with an insatiable taste for human blood waits patiently for its chance to escape and wreak havoc on all of mankind. A crack team of the world's best scientists work feverishly to understand the creature and how to stop it. But something goes wrong. A malfunction releases the creature into the world. Nothing can prepare you for the terror. The horrors, the gore, nothing can prepare you for th the creature that came to eat us up, the movie. Part of the cinema's lineup of Rasputin's 10 in one schlock theater, $2 for 10 shows. Now showing, watch at your own risk.